Today's video is going to be... What? No, you're not wearing that. Why not? This is a serious video. Like, yeah, but it's a gag in itself! No, it's a serious video and you always wear it. Do you remember the new killer video? We yeah. Had a <laughs> and that turned out right. Take it off. I took it off! No, put... What? Put something else on. Yeah. On. Okay, you asked for it then. Alright, we'll just put that. Get off! Alright, I'll put it on! All right, there's gonna be no visual gags because my edit is a square, but today's video is all about how the Liberal government treats whistleblowers. Enjoy. You wanna know something really, really annoying? Well, when politicians or elites commit crimes and then someone tells of them, it's usually not the criminal politician who's punished, it's the snitch. That's right, in Australia, snitches get stitches. Wait, sorry, snitches get secret trials and NSI orders, that's what happens. Not as catchy, but before you celebrate having a country that's as gangster as whoever tried to kill 6 9 or whatever the f his name is, I personally don't think it's great that we have an attorney general hellbent on ruining people's lives for reporting war crimes and corruption. Very Bill Maher point, but really? And this country that we live in? Shouldn't the slogan be snitches get medals? Unless they tell on the bra boys, get him, Russ. Yeah. Take David McBride. He was an army lawyer stationed in Afghanistan who believed that Australia wasn't acting in the best interests of that country, i.e., executing innocent civilians, i.e., committing war crimes. So, bit on the line, warranted a report, tried to do it repeatedly into internal complaints in the army, and that went nowhere. So he complained with evidence to the ABC. So that went nowhere again. Not nowhere, it does pay me to say this, but Dan Oaks, you're all right, for now. The information was so damning that even the last Attorney General, George Brandis, AKA Friar Tuck, thought, no, I'm not gonna prosecute McBride for that. It formed a large chunk of the Brereton report into war crimes by Justice Brereton, who also recommended not to prosecute McBride. There's a reason no one thought McBride should be prosecuted, and it's because he leaked details including 10 illegal killings of unarmed men and children, one where the Australian army murdered a man and his child while they were sleeping, and it took Perth's own Patrick Bateman Christian Porter to become Attorney General and think, my one job is to uphold the law, so why don't I go after a veteran awarded a combat services medal who reported international and domestic crimes and try and imprison him with laws made for terrorists? Yes, seems like a noble pursuit. At that point, Christian's advisor Dracula said, Christian, what are you doing? That's not evil enough. You're right. Why don't I go after a witness and his lawyer trying to give evidence to the International Court of Justice because that evidence incriminates my friends. And this time, I'll break my own laws to do it. Wonderful, Mr. Bateman. I, I mean, Porter. Ah, ah, ah. Well, obviously, Dracula part isn't true, but the rest is! Christian actually broke the law to go after whistleblowers. And just to prove how much of an upside down world we live in, McBride is the only Australian deployed to Afghanistan who's being prosecuted. Murderers are walking free. And a man who has two young daughters is facing life in prison from his own government for reporting murders, which he is legally required to report. Christian Porter is also going after a man with the pseudonym Witness K for exposing Australia illegally spying on East Timor. Let me give you a background of how evil that is. It all centres around the 2004 negotiations between East Timor and Australia for the Timor Sea. East Timor is a very young country and it's a very poor country. It survived massacre after massacre by the Indonesians. And just to give you an idea of how poor it was, it had children dying of stuff like choking on roundworms, something that could be treated for a buck. Clearly, the country needed cash. And it thought maybe a good way of getting cash would be its own resources. Well, during the negotiations over Timor Sea, a sea in between Australia and East Timor, filled with natural resources, Liberal Party Foreign Minister Alexander Downer instructed ASIS, our spying agency, to bug Timorese officers. So spy on East Timor in order to rip them off. And boy, did they rip them off. It makes crikey subscriptions look like a bargain. With the added benefit of insider knowledge, and because East Timor was 
desperate for money. They managed to get a 50-50 split with Timor for the multi-billion dollar Greater Sunrise gas field, a field that should be entirely East Timor's. They also managed to sneak a little clause that stipulated that there would be no renegotiations for 50 years. So when all the resources are dried up, then you can get your fair share. Oh, no, no, wait, wait, wait. 25 years after that, you can get your fair share of nothing. Now, obviously, spying on a foreign government is both a domestic and international crime, but the crime Christian Porter is prosecuting is in 2013, Witness K, an ex asis agent that was in control of the operation, was seeking to give evidence in a hearing at the International Court of Justice surrounding the illegal actions of Australia. He was represented by Bernard Caleri. There you have it. That's the crime. A witness seeking to give evidence in a court and a lawyer representing this client is the crime. Australia doesn't get to be smug about liberal democracy anymore. We've confiscated the passport of someone who's done nothing wrong and are holding secret trials for them in contempt of the policy of open justice. I swear the only difference between us and complete totalitarianism is that it's just not as many people do shit that really piss off the government here. And what really pisses them off is reporting their crimes. Because it's not just Alexander Downer or John Howard who are complicit in this one. Oh no. Josh Frydenberg and Greg Hunt were both foreign affairs advisors to Downer at the time and Wentworth MP Dave Sharma was a legal advisor to Downer. Prosecuting Australia's heroes to protect your mates, are you, Porter? Are you ready for the worst part about this? The Liberals that ordered the illegal spying on East Timor, they didn't do it to advance Australia's interests in some sort of bizarre Robin Hood illegal diplomacy. Robbing from the clinically malnourished to give to a country who I bet at least 70% of the population has industrial freezers in their garage packed with McCain smiles, and if you don't, you're a pov c No, they did it purely for themselves with little tricks like purposefully characterising the helium within the sea as waste and then giving it away for free to multinational corporations such as Woodside and ConocoPhillips. Yep, Woodside Petroleum, we're just uh, international garbos, yeah. Oh, I see you dropped this gold, madam. Here, let me dispose of that for you. Now Australians buy that very helium that we stole from the East Timorese, then gave away as waste to Woodside. But don't worry, there's a very happy ending to this. Alexander Downer got a nice cushy consulting role at Woodside Petroleum. Criminals using your taxpayer funded spy agencies to steal from third world countries and then give to multinational corporations. Also after their careers in politics are over, they have a nice, comfy, highly paid job waiting for them. Then allowing their accomplices like Dave Sharma to be parachuted into government to make sure that the people who expose the crimes are prosecuted. Let me just paint you further a picture of the character of people running this country. Dave Sharma is perhaps the slimiest, greediest con man in the government. Just last March, when it looked like airlines were gonna go bust, he purchased shares in Qantas on a day that they were trading at $2.86. Why would you buy shares in what looks like one of the worst times to buy shares in airline history? Oh, it's because he had an insider little tip. Just so happens on the exact same day he bought shares for a bargain, his government then proceeded to bail them out which contributed to the biggest one day gain on the ASX since 1997. Now Qantas shares are hovering around $5. He seems to have also done the same thing when it comes to Australia's COVID vaccine. In June, Sharma bought shares in biotech company CSL when they were trading at $287 a piece. Hmm, I wonder if he knew anything. Well, a few months later, would you look at that? His government announced a $1.7 billion agreement with CSL and AstraZeneca to produce a COVID vaccine. CSL shares have risen as high as $318 since. This is my point. Most normal people have seen this global pandemic and economic meltdown as a tragedy. Something to get through, to survive, to help other people around if you can. Just as most people would view the situation in East Timor or the Afghan war, but not the Liberal Party. They view great tragedies as great opportunities, a chance to enrich themselves. And if you stand in the way of those opportunities, like Witness K, like Bernard Caleri, like David McBride, you better be prepared to feel the full force of the taxpayer funded mechanisms at their disposal. Australia is run by criminals who you pay to punish the heroes that try and stop their crimes. Anyway, there's a petition in the description in support of David McBride. And... Uh, subscribe and like the video! <laughs> what? Please share and comment below. Command.